Now, did you know that in India, nearly 1 million students, which is approximately 10 lakh students, graduate every year as an engineer? You know what's even more scary? Almost 48% of these students, which means almost half of these students are end up getting unemployed. So the big question is, is engineering a lucrative career in today's date? Should you be pursuing engineering in 2022? So let's actually find out. Right now is a career deciding time. Colleges will be starting in a few months. And this video is mainly for those students who are trying to figure out if they should be taking engineering. And if yes, then which branch to select? Now if you see the data, year on year, the average number of engineers who have been unemployed has consistently been 50%. So the big question is, why are so many people end up becoming an engineer when the number of people being unemployed is almost half of the graduates? And the answer is very simple. From a parent's time period, engineering and doctorate is considered to be a stable source of revenue. So if you are an engineer, first of all, it's like you have a status in the economy. And second, it's considered that after a four years of degree, you will have a job in hand, which is a guaranteed job. But is that the reality? During our parents' time period, becoming an engineer was difficult. The number of people who were becoming an engineer were much limited, because of which people who were getting a job were getting a good stable revenue. But in today's day, the big question is, are there enough jobs right now? as for an engineering student because clearly 10 lakh students are graduating every year as an engineer. If you see the average pay of an engineer in India, it is about 5.7 lakh rupees now, which is about 38 to 40,000 rupees per month after tax. Now you ask yourself, is that a good amount of salary in India in today's day? And the answer to that is no. If you see, even Uber drivers are actually earning more as compared to a fresh engineering graduate. Now if you see this data from 2019, you can clearly see that only about 12% of the overall students who graduate as an engineer are actually employable. Almost about 38% of the engineers who graduate are not even trainable. And the big question to this is why? Purely because if you see in India, which is the best college or which are the best colleges for studies? The answer to that is medical. And you know why? Because if you see any medical college in India, it is always located next to hospital. If you want to be a doctor, you have to practice it. It is not just theory, but in case of engineering, it's more of Ratta Mar, right? It's more of theory. There is very less practical and even if there is practical, it is inside the college in a very small area. It is not like the engineering college is located right next to a factory. The amount of practical knowledge which you earn or which you gain in an engineering college in today's date is very much limited. And the economy today is moving from a degree economy to a skill economy. So having a right set of skills is very important and very critical for you to grow in your career path. Now, first of all, decide whether you want to be an engineer. So you need to be completely honest to yourself and ask yourself, do I want to be an engineer or am I becoming an engineer because my family wants me to be or am I becoming an engineer only because all my friends are becoming an engineer and be completely honest to yourself. You will be spending four years of your life whether you're studying mechanical, civil, electrical, doesn't matter. But you will be spending a four years. Make sure that whichever branch that you're selecting or whether you have decided to become an engineer, you're completely sure about it. If you are sure, you will love engineering because as an engineer, you end up developing analytical skills. You end up having a very practical approach. But at the same time, if you do not enjoy it, then you will struggle for the next four years. So be very careful over here. Second main thing which I want to help you understand is that as an engineering student, when you graduate, it doesn't mean that you have to work only in the technical field. You will often find students who graduate as an engineer, but they end up working in non-technical field. They might be working in consulting companies or they might be working strategy, e-commerce field. So there are different kind of roles and these roles might not require you to be an engineer. Also, you find a lot of students who are working in a technical field, but might not have an engineering background. They might have learned everything themselves. So there are a lot of jobs which doesn't require you to have an engineering degree, but helps you enter that particular field based on your experience and based on your knowledge. Third main thing which I want to help you understand is, unfortunately in India, engineers are not much valued. There's more value for an engineering degree right now abroad. So for example, mechanical engineer, if you go to Germany or US, then there's a huge scope. As an electrical engineer, being US or Australia, as an electronics and communication engineer, again as US and Australia, or as a computer science engineer, UK, Singapore, US. So these countries offer immense amount of value for you to be an engineer as compared to what you will be earning in India. 
So definitely my recommendation would be if you're thinking of becoming an engineer, then definitely also plan your masters so that you can move ahead to these countries where your lifestyle can be much better and you will be valued much more as an engineer as compared to what value you will be getting in India. And the fourth point which I want to help you understand and I think barely anyone speaks about this is that as an engineer you have higher chances to immigrate to another location. Now for example if you want to move to Canada or Germany or Australia these countries when you want to immigrate they have certain requirements which is called skill requirements. As an engineer you will have higher weightage as compared to someone let's say in sales field or a business development field. As an engineer you get added points provided you studied engineering and also you have worked as an engineer for a couple of years. So definitely as an engineer you get a lot more weightage from a PR perspective as well. So now if you have decided that you want to be an engineer then the big question is which branch to select. Now that's another headache. Now a lot of people might be becoming a computer science engineering because the entire tech space is growing right now. Just because everyone is taking computer science does it mean that you should also take? The answer is no. Whatever field that you are taking you need to make sure that you have interest in it. Because if not and if you are not able to stand out in that crowd you will struggle. The number of computer engineers who end up joining TCS and Infosys and end up getting a 3 lakh a CTC are immense. So just because you take computer science engineering doesn't guarantee you a high paid job in a fan company like Google, Microsoft. You need to have the skills for it. So make sure that if you are taking any branch you understand what are the requirements for it. You understand what kind of job potential is there in that particular field and you also understand what kind of skills are required for it. Also I have a complete video over here where I explain which are the top 5 engineering branches in India and in that I break it down as per the pay structure as per the job availability. So definitely check out this video. Also if you want to see what engineering branches majority of students take this is the data. Now over here we can clearly see that majority of the students in India take computer science engineering after which is mechanical and then it's ECE. So these are the top 3 preferred branches in India. Now something which a lot of students have been asking me is should they be taking a niche engineering field? For example should they be taking agriculture engineering or aeronautics or automobile engineering? And to that my answer is a no. Always go for a broader field. Now for example let's say I am a mechanical engineer. Once I graduate I can work as a pipeline engineer. I can work in the oil and gas sector. So for example I can come to Dubai and work in the oil and gas sector or I can even work in the automobile sector. So I have multiple job options. But if I graduate as an aeronautical or let's say as an automobile engineering then the chances of me moving into oil and gas or into a separate sector is going to be very difficult. So always go for an engineering branch which is quite broad than going for a niche. And you can always do your masters in a niche field which will give you more experience and more expertise. But now if you don't find engineering interesting then you don't have to force engineering upon yourself. There are so many different fields like business law, corporate law, um, CA. So there are so many career options which will give you an equal or a better opportunity in India. And in terms of monetary as well better pay scale. So definitely engineering is not the only option. But again in summary I would say that if you are someone who is really into engineering, who wants to solve problems, who wants to do a practical approach to life, who wants to build analytical skills, engineering can be a great field and even today engineering does have a huge scope. But again the huge scope is only for those students who have the skills for it, who have the interest towards it. Otherwise you will struggle in the engineering field. So again I hope you find this video useful. I hope you actually understood does engineering have a scope in 2022. If you did find this video useful, do like it, do subscribe and I'll see you all in the next video.